little bit harder. Well, and Liam, the hard part too is therapists were not allowed to solicit those. That's against our code of ethics and our license. So we're always like, people can freely offer them up. Like that doesn't bother us, but we're not allowed to be like, hey, if someone could give us a feedback review or something, like we can't publicly have you all out of travel reviews even, right? Right. And even most of us are not out there falling in love with our clients. Like, I don't know why that's the thing. It's like, it is, isn't it? We're not that media perception. Or I could play some in like, so do I lay down on the couch? Wait, oh, no one's done that in years. Thank and God. there's so much that you can do with the whole butterfly oh my reference gosh. too. Like, I yeah. have no idea what you mean, kaleidoscope <laughs> effect, fluttering, migration. <laughs> Would you like a list of words? We have that. What's going on everyone? Parker here from Prime News Media alongside Alicia James with Flamingo Consulting and welcome to Michigan Marketing in the Morning. We're so excited to have Elena Smith with Mariposa Counseling. I mean Michigan Marketing in the Morning this is now our third episode so hot damn look at us. Yeah. We almost look professional at this point. Almost. Although Elena has now seen that this podcast is pretty much just a shit show. Yeah. That's what makes it delightful. We, we pull it all together on the back end. It looks good when we're done. Just the amount of things that end up on the cutting room floor is appalling, right? Well, we also were going to call it the Michigan Marketing in the Morning shit show, like in parentheses. And <laughs> we yeah. probably should have just gone with that. Probably. Maybe that's the entire outtakes episode is the shit show. Yes. <laughs> I'm full of great ideas. I'm not editing it. So it works out great. Anyway, so Michigan Marketing in the Morning is our basically our way to talk to local entrepreneurs who have a killer story and let them have the platform to be able to project that out into the world. And because we also just really like talking about marketing and Nerd. we would be doing it anyway. Total nerds. <laughs> we decided that we would take in these small local entrepreneurs and go over their marketing and then give them a entire six to 12 month plan on what they should do with their marketing or that they shouldn't take our advice at all, but either way we give it to them. Yes. So it's just part of the package. You, we, you get to tell your story, but you have to listen to us talk about how we think you should help. We could help you with marketing. Sure. Not even us help you, just. It seems like you need to exchange. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Fair you have enough. to suffer through the back half in order to get the front half. I was gonna say, if you want us to actually put the, push this out, you eventually have to let us talk, right? Yeah. That's how that works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty much how we built all of our businesses. Elena, tell us about your business. Yeah, so my business started two years ago. Um, I've been a therapist for 12 years and have worked pretty much every area of the field and ended up at a group practice as an independent contractor. Um, they got to a point where it was like, hey, it'd be really cool to do this myself. And I was learning a lot from them and kind of seeing how the business works. And so I went out by myself um, and created Mariposa Counseling without the original intention to kind of grow into a group, just sort of very comfortable in my own space, doing my own thing. Um, and over time came to find out like I had this wait list that was five to seven people long at any given time. And I was already seeing like 28 people a week and running groups and it, then the business. So it was a lot. And it was like, if I could create more of me in the world, then I could help more people. I could do more things. Um, and so I decided to branch out into a group practice. Um, and have now an admin assistant and two other therapists and the other two therapists started just about a month, month and a half ago. And so it's been quite a journey learning how to like first year and a half of business was just me and suddenly I'm acclimating to having staff and all of the things that come along with that as well as the fact that like the brand changes a little bit when it's not just you anymore. And so trying to figure out like, what do I do when I'm responsible for other people and what does that look like? Did you ever aspire to being like an entrepreneur and having like a business versus kind of just being in practice by yourself? I'd always kind of thought of it. It was always a dream of mine. I grew up, my dad owned his own business for several years and that ended up, he was a mechanic and owned a body shop and that went down during one of the recessions um, in like the early 2000s. And so I watched kind of that whole trajectory. And so that gave me a little bit of pause of knowing what can happen on the other side of that and the elements that are partly completely out of your control. But also knowing like I'm in a vastly different field. He was in Metro Detroit, which was not a great place to be in the auto industry at the time. So 
there were all these other factors, but I've always been interested in the idea of it and do my own thing. Um, I have really loved being my own boss and making all the rules and my hair could be whatever color I love it. And I can I have no I idea what you mean. <laughs> So it just came to be very natural and really fun for me. But then I've enjoyed the idea of just getting to build something and create it from the ground up and make it exactly what I believe it should be. What was it about, I guess, what was it about counseling and therapy that drove you to that career in the first place? Well, it wasn't naturally my intention. So I'd started out at Cornerstone University and halfway through switched my major um, out of like a ministry-based major because I realized I wanted to actually make money in the world. (laughs) (laughs) It's a really important point. Yep. So I transitioned to something. I went to sociology thinking, well, I'd take a sociology class. I like it. And they had a really great social work program. I was like, I don't want to be a social worker. I don't want to do case management. I didn't really know what else was out there. And then coming into my senior year with, oh, you can do everything and nothing with sociology. Uh Um, So it was like a bunch of entry-level HR, entry-level things. And I took one or two counseling classes I've always loved. Hearing other people's stories, being involved with them. I joke to my friends, it's really just because I get all the drama without being in the drama. And I just get to like live other people's lives. And that's pretty cool for me. Uh, But also help them with getting through the drama when it doesn't impact me. Because that's always the least fun part. So it was either counseling or bartending. Yeah. You get one or the <laughs> I other. I was doing interesting for like six years. So. Oh, so that was like, that was the, it was the transition. Yeah. They're like, so, okay, now I want to help them instead of just serve them. Yeah. Got it. So then I rolled right into a master's of counseling and have been kind of on my way ever since. Was, was there any, what is it? it is, are you just drawn to like people? Or do you want to like, I guess I want to understand what was it that made you shift from, I want to watch the drama to, I want to help stop the drama? I think just partially going through my own stories of like struggling a lot with friendships and relationships, having been really heavily bullied. I've been in a couple of relationships that involved infidelity on their side. And so recognizing what it meant to me to have somebody was like, Hey, I'm in it with you. Like you're not alone in that. And so really being able to join people where they were at. But I think, too, I've always had a heart for the people who kind of like fall through the cracks. So I specialize in addictions. I work a lot with both the addicts themselves, but also family members of addicts. And just being able to be that voice that says, like, irregardless of what social stigma says or what the world says, like you have dignity, worth and respect as a human being. And it's really amazing to watch the shift in somebody when they start to actually believe that about themselves. And so I kind of like fell into addictions. It's the only place that gave me an internship. But then I was like... I had one semester left in my master's because it was a full year internship. And I was like, oh, I actually like this. I should probably learn something about how to do what I'm already doing. And so I tacked on, I didn't need any classes that last semester except the intern- internship. And I tacked on three master's level classes in addictions just to really get a basis. And I've been kind of off and running ever since. So a lot of it has been like, I just sort of stumbled into things and discovered I loved it. Um, I think that's kind of one of the best ways to do life is to be guided, but not overly planned. The universe is subtle that way as yeah. well. Yeah. What, tell us about the story of the name. So Mari Costa is the Spanish word for butterfly. Um, and so I really love that idea of like the metamorphosis and what happens. But especially, I think a lot of people come into counseling and they're like, my life is just a disaster. There is nothing here. We are a wreck. And when you think about that, like we think of the pretty like caterpillar goes in the cocoon and it comes out pretty, but it literally turns into goo in the middle. Mm-hmm. And so helping people recognize like it's okay if your world is goo, like that's a good thing. It means we're moving somewhere. And really having that. And then I'm also Spanish speaking. And so having that nod to the Hispanic population and to being Spanish speaking was important to me as well. How far do your clients travel to come see you? Um, well, with telehealth, that changes a lot. And mm-hmm. so I think right now I've got some people who are closer up north towards like Traverse City area. I've got a bunch out of Lansing area, some in Battle Creek. Um, and I've had as far as Metro Detroit for seeing me. It also helps. One of my specialties is porn and sex addiction. And there's not very many of us in the state who work with that and work with infidelity heavily um, from the angle of like, hey, your relationship can get better, you can heal. And so a lot of people will seek me out or seek my practice out because of that specialty. And so at any given time, I could have like half of my caseload be virtual because they're all doing it over video. I'm just curious, like, how are these people finding you? Like, are you like affiliates with other like resource banks or... Are they just finding you because like you're just the person to go to for this stuff? Yeah. So one thing that helps is with my certification, the certified sex addiction therapist, there's only like six of us in all of West Michigan. And so we know each other and we have each other's names. And so like if I'm full, I might hand out other people's names and vice versa. 
Um, but it's also like the credentialing agency who gave us that has a website with a listing. Um, I'm on Psychology Today, which is a pretty popular listing. And then I have my website, my social medias. A lot of people find me word of mouth. So through previous clients or random people I've never heard of, they'll be like, oh, I got your name from my doctor. Like, I don't know your doctor, but sweet. Like, I have no idea. Sometimes how in the world they're finding me. Um, other times it's just they know someone who knows someone who knew me. Uh, so it's a lot of kind of sometimes untraceable, but I'm not really sure where it's coming from. But I think the specialty helps because then if people are searching just for that, there's not a whole lot of us. I think there's maybe 20, 25 in all of Michigan. So is everyone in your practice also focusing on this particular? No. So I have one who has um, an addictions background. She just graduated, did residential, kind of the same starting as me. So I was like, I get you and we're going to do great. Like you are my story. Um, and so she's very interested in pursuing it. So we just signed her up and she's starting that in July. Um, and I've been working with her really heavily on that and getting her for the training. Um, the other woman is actually a play therapist who specializes with kids. And she'll see adults too, but she comes from a huge trauma background. And I was like, well, that feels perfect because if we're seeing someone with addiction, that can guarantee traumas in the house. Yeah. Um, and the kids are impacted. Other people are impacted. So really wanting to add on like just everyone there focuses on addictions. We focus on trauma. Like that's what we do and we do it well. Um, which was part of my like, okay, I have all these specialty certifications. I want to hire people interested in that going into that. Like, we don't want to be necessarily a one size fits all practice. Yeah. There's going to be people who just aren't a fit for us. And that's okay. We want that. Like, let them go somewhere else that is a fit. We do what we do. I love that. Where do you want your practice to be in three years? I would really love it to be self-sufficient enough with like the staffing and employees that I'm not carrying as high of a caseload. I really enjoy doing like public speaking events or I love the supervision side of it. So the management and the training and the helping on that end. So I'd really love for my staff to be able to kind of carry some of the business overhead and I get to be way more of the behind the scenes and support person and guide. And you get to do more of the the extra things that don't necessarily translate yeah. to money. It translates to following the passion or building out the Absolutely. reputation. It doesn't necessarily yeah. translate to ROI. God. Mm -hmm. And like, I love writing. I enjoy doing blog posts, all of those kinds of things. And so really being able to go into some of my other areas that I enjoy that. I love that, but that's also probably not going to make me as much money. And right now I have to focus on the things that really bring in the most money, but it'd be beautiful if I could find other ways to help serve and help and sometimes bridge those gaps because not everyone needs therapy or not everyone can afford therapy. And so being able to maybe offer some like free trainings or some free workshops or doing things like that, that can kind of bridge some of that gap mm -hmm. and actually being able to afford to do so. So what do you feel like is the biggest struggle for you right now to get to that point? I think a lot of it is understanding how to shift from this is mine and it's me to like, this is a group and it's a much broader vision and still trying to stay true to this company I've founded with the people that have come on and how we talk about ourselves, but also recognizing like, I can't be the main focal point anymore. It's not just me and my story. It's this group of people and very much wanting to make it this group feel and not this individual feel. It's funny. I think you and I both kind of got into business the same in a very similar mm -hmm. style. I had no intention when I first started Flamingo of building a business. It was just a consulting thing that I did on the side. I was a primarily stay at home mom. I kind of stumbled into it and now all of a sudden it's my full-time gig and I've got five employees or five team members. And it's just, it's making that transition from I'm one to I'm many. And yes. then you're the face, but you don't have to be the only face. And I know that transition mm -hmm. is really hard. Um, I love that you already have an admin assistant because it means you're already letting go of responsibility for certain yes. tasks, mm -hmm. which is a huge step for pretty <laughs> much every accidental entrepreneur. Dear God. Oops, that's me. I just fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so hard when it's your baby, right? Yes. Like this is the thing you've created, especially when it's something so emotionally tied to who you are mm -hmm. and all of your history and, you know, everything about your career came to this point. It feels really hard to let go. But the fact that you're already looking that far out is incredible and that you know that yeah. there's going to be stages. So... Um, that makes our job so much easier <laughs> because that means I don't have to convince you to let the fuck go. Like no, I'm <laughs> super weird. And so my admin, we've actually been friends for years. Okay. And it was one of those, like during COVID, we stopped seeing as much of each other, but we still like, we had a Snapchat friendship, I would call it. Like we spoke all the time over Snapchat, but I almost never saw each other in real life. And then I had put up that I was hiring and I was looking for somebody because I was like, okay, I want an admin first and then we'll work on the other staffing and I hired a business coach and that was kind of her mentality too. And so 
my friend had reached out. She's like, I'm kind of interested. And I was like, well, by all means, apply. Like, and I will treat you just as every other applicant. We'll do interviews, whatever. Well, then she had a family health issue with her father. It wasn't able to really. And she was like, you know, I got to pull myself out. I can't really give to this. I want you to have someone who can really give. I've got to handle stuff with my dad right now. And I was like, absolutely. I honor that. Well, then um, I posted on Indeed and had like 80 some applications in like three days. I was like, what have I done? Because I needed <laughs> admin to find an admin. Like, I can't take through this. Perfect. And so then I narrowed it down, got to a couple of applicants. I was like, these are not a fit. Something's off. And I was like, I'm just going to ask her. And so I reached back out and I was like, okay, it's been like a month and a half. Can you do this? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. But I want to do it right. Like, here's my resume. Interview me. Like, we're doing the whole thing like you did for everybody else. And I love that because I think, especially as an entrepreneur, friends and family don't always view you as like you know, a, business a business owner. owner. Yeah. yeah. And so to have somebody who respected this and she came in dressed way more professionally than I've ever seen her. And I was like, I don't even know who you are. I love this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> This is amazing seeing just who you will be and the respect you have for me. And that was part of what told me she was right for the business too, because she was all in on like, this is your baby. This is your vision. Um, her husband's a tattoo artist. He's kind of independent. Like he works at a shop and has a chair, but he also does a lot of stuff. So she understands that aspect too of like, this is your life, your business, your family's support. Let's make this work. And so it ended up being this amazing caring. And then she... Like, I was like, hey, how do you feel about social media? Have you ever heard of Canva? And she had not So I taught her about Canva, and then she was like, this is incredible. I'm like, I know, because we have no clue what we're doing, and they do it for us. <laughs> so then, like, handing the reins over, and now it still feels really weird when things go up. And I'm like, I didn't put that on Facebook. Cool. <laughs> what that? I'm like, just put that That's my feeling. favorite thing ever. Yeah. It's my absolute favorite thing. And I'm as shocked as, as everybody else sometimes. I'm like, oh, damn, that was good. It was fine, <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> So it's been really cool. Like Hannah reads it. She's been really excited about that. And then she was interested in doing some writing and blog post stuff. And so just sort of watching how I was able to see her strengths and pull those out and the job has grown way beyond what she wanted it to be. But that's kind of what I want for everyone in my business is like, let's figure out what you're good at. And if you are better than me at something, please let me pass that off. Like I'm tired of not knowing what I don't know. <laughs> And trying to find try to bootstrap every detail yeah. and trying to make it work because you can't let it go or there's right. not somebody else there that can take it as well as you can. Can we just pause for a hot second? Because um, she said she is a business coach. She said she has hired people. She said she's interviewing friends like they're like real applicants. I just, oh, I'm having a moment. I, I don't, agree. I don't so know I'm, what to do with myself right so, now. And I, I shit you not, like, this isn't mm -hmm. just to, like, pump your tires. Yeah. Like, when when you said admin assistant, mm -hmm. I was just like, I didn't know that counselors knew about admin assistants. <laughs> I got really excited. Yeah. I'm like, I was expecting, like, oh, you know, I hired my girlfriend. She's kind of dabbling and helping with some billing. And you're like, no, I have an admin assistant. Holy shit. <laughs> got a little weak in knees. Kind of glad I'm sitting. Well, just like oh. yesterday, we had a, a, a junk removal guy who said that he has a CRM. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, did he say CRM? He, and it's automated? He said automations. I'm like, I just, oh, I don't, I can't, I can't do this, guys. I, I, feel like we're, I feel like we're interviewing people who are so much better than us. I, <laughs> I heard this, like, no one taught me how to run a business. Like, there's no classes in my grad program. Like, the assumption is private practice is something you, like, retire into. And it was definitely not on my, you know, 10-year plan. But then getting into it, I was like, okay, I want to build her because I could learn. I'm not learning. And then like, I've built my website myself on Wix and done all of that and have been like trying to learn SEO and things that I'm just like, this is a lot. And so I'm going like, having an admin, I'm like, hey, you want to read these things on SEO and just like do whatever you think comes back to another website because at some point we'll piece the one, but that's not today. <laughs> But also knowing like the businesses that have succeeded by know that I don't know what I don't know. And I try to pass off to other people and get that information. Oh my gosh. I just, I feel like I need a tissue. <laughs> this, is, this is like a really big moment I, for yeah. me. Oh my God. She just jumped right into business and it's all the things and she hired the people and she, <laughs> Jesus, I need. She did the thing. She did the thing. You know, all the things we say, hey, we should have done this differently. She already did it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so biggest struggle right now, remind me, is what yes. in your business? Trying to fill my new therapist caseloads. And so really figuring out how do I market for them? Because and it, some of that has been like 
training Emily, my admin, to be like, okay, when they call asking for me, here's how you talk about them. <laughs> but yeah, talk with the therapist. And even if I catch the call or the email, like I'm doing that and trying to talk about that. But it is just feeling so responsible, like for their livelihoods now and just the stress that comes from that and knowing like they took a huge leap starting up with somebody brand new and leaving the comfort of like, places that had 401 carries but it's like <laughs> benefits packages and I'm like I'll pay for a training once a year ready to so but just knowing that they saw the vision too and wanting to respect that and really finding a way to like keep them full to grow as with them and not just servicing my specialty or what you're not just always letting like, your caseload and whatever you can't take is kind yeah. of trickles down you want to actually make sure that they're supported so that you can, right. oh my God, she's even a good boss. <laughs> the hell is happening? Uh, we need know. to, we need to like vet these, these guests better so that we have people that suck. I, yeah. Right. So we can yeah, like go in. be a disaster so I can feel amazing. Yeah. So I can go and unfuck it all up. Can you make sure it's all fucked before you get here? I mean, yeah. Even like looking at your socials this morning, I was like, God damn it. She did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> I want, okay, well, I'm starting to hear something. I have no clue what I'm doing, but somehow it's working. But also, I don't know what I'm doing that's working, so I need to know what to keep doing. And one of the skill that. sets, though, that you have because of the, the career that you're in is you have an innate ability to understand your ideal customer and your mm -hmm. ideal client, right? Because yeah. you like literally godly well, right? <laughs> and so, what you're doing, and what I imagine kind of goes through your head is hey, I'm thinking of this person who was just on my couch or just telehealthing yeah. with me the other day. What would I do if I wasn't talking to them? How would I get their attention? How would I get in front of them? How would I tell the world about what I can do so I can help that person? You have the ability to, I mean, you know the ins and outs. People pay mm -hmm. stupid amounts of money for market research to understand their yeah. ideal customer like you do already. Mm -hmm. And your career is literally connecting with yeah. them on the emotional stuff. So on one side you have a huge leg up because you know your ideal target so well. Even like the deepest fears and the stuff that sits really deep and ugly that we don't talk about yeah. that you can kind of speak to but in a positive way. And you really are doing that in, amaz in an amazing way. Thank you. Um, I, think that's, I, I think that's one of the best parts mm -hmm. of what you're doing and where you, what you offer is because you know the dark and deep, deep secrets. Mm -hmm. And you can speak to them and support them in it rather than yeah. the shame that normally goes along with it. So I think that's one of the reasons why that content is so good. Because I agree. it's just you you understand them at a deeper level than anyone ever could. Right. Um, so you mentioned that you are on like psychology today. You have mm -hmm. the credentials, so yeah. that helps with getting leads because people mm -hmm. are literally seeking out that specific credential. Um, you have socials, you have a website. Mm -hmm. Where else are you playing right now? Pretty much just that. And so some of it is like if someone just goes on Google and types counseling, right? A million things are going to come up. And I have a Google My Business. I don't fully know what I'm doing with it, but it's a bit bigger. Yeah. And trying to get that moving. Um, and so a lot of it is just I've been, it sometimes feels like I've just been lucky so far. But then it also is like I've got to find some way to keep it up and to maintain and to know like what are we looking at in terms of maintenance and what are... Like I hadn't set long-term goals because I was just kind of doing my own thing and it was what it was and hiring Emily has helped a lot because I would like post on any of my socials and then nothing for like three weeks and then I'd do like four posts in a week and then nothing for a month and like- We call it the binge and purge cycle of marketing. Yeah. It, it's a thing. I'd be um, like, oh, I should do something with this so they know I'm alive still. Ready for any bad thing. And, and especially if your workload is full- or your caseload mm -hmm. is full, it's really hard to go, well, I should probably still post because, yeah. but or I can't take any more. I'm for it. And that was still like, even trying to figure out, like I'm still catching little things. Like two weeks ago, I caught that on Instagram. The bio was like, I'm a lover of pet pigs. And I was like, no, my business is about, I am the person that I was only about. There's like 10 pig things in my office. And so even just still finding little things that like, I don't remember where to look to catch that that mess had been changed over or yeah, to make sure that, oh no, this is about the business. It's not about a lay bed anymore and finding that. Yeah. Um, well, and I do just want to say like for, and for the audience as well, volume negates luck. So yeah. the amount of work that you've been putting in is a direct, like the, I guess the luck that you've seen is a direct mm -hmm. result from all the things that you've been doing. So if yeah. you didn't just jump in you wouldn't be lucky 
and right. you know getting what you're getting so i like i mainly just wanted to say that for the audience mm -hmm. is that like if you don't know what you're doing it's okay and you're not fucking supposed to and also no. like come on the show but um <laughs> but be a mess please uh, yeah <laughs> please right help me but um yeah like you don't need to know what you're doing you just have to fucking start yes so have you ever hired a marketing agency before or any kind of like business besides your coach? Oh, coach. She, doesn't, she doesn't need it to. I know. <laughs> I say my coach is a therapist who owns a private practice herself and does consulting. And so that's where that came about, but I've never hired anyone with actual marketing. Okay. Um, and then obviously that your admin on the front half is pretty much the extent of everybody you've yes. hired besides people who are working mm -hmm. within the practice. Okay. Um, Oh, I don't even, uh, you said you have ideas. Let's have you go oh, first. Oh, I do. Oh, go. You run. So, so I had to do the same exact thing with my company because we originally started as Parker to Cover Productions. In fact, that's still the LLC. So, um, I had to, I had to kind of shift from like, this is me creating all this content to no, I have 15 other guys who are way better than I am. <laughs> and you know, what really helped us was introducing those people. And saying, like, listen, yeah, I'm still behind it. Like, now we have people asking, like, so how involved are you? Yeah, like, are you just, the other way. Like, like yeah. are you just selling me and, and then they take it over or whatever? And now I have to reassure people that, like, yeah, I'm still involved. What I think would be really, really helpful for you is sitting them down and having them talk on camera about just, like, who they are, what they do, and what they specialize in. And have you endorse them. So saying like, yeah, I'm still here, but look at all the other awesome people that I hired that, that can help you, yeah. you know, and, or this person is really good at this thing that I'm not so good at, you know, and that's why they're here. So if you have this issue, you know, like bring them in. Mm -hmm. And also I think it may be, um, unless you have like a very clear, uh, look into what that avatar is for those people. I would even say like ask them, you know, and ask them about like what uh, what problems are the people that they serve dealing with, and what can we use that, or you know, what can we use of that in our marketing to say, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I understand that you're dealing with this and this and this, and and that normally leads to this. If that sounds like something that you're dealing with, well, I might have the solution for you. Comment this word, and I'll reach out. You know, okay. and I, I think doing that and having the people at the practice that aren't you mm -hmm. doing that themselves and like posting photos of themselves or even commenting on posts and stuff so that people that are following you are constantly seeing these other people mm -hmm. and it's not just yeah. you. I think I completely agree. I think there's something to, you know, you have people with different specialties within the practice. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best things I think you could do is actually be on video yourself going, I want to introduce you to this person. Mm -hmm. This is why she's an amazing addition to the practice. And it's because she's not me. The fact that you have a child trauma specialist mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. And you can even speak to one of the reasons why this was so important to me was because I realized that if this is if there's addiction happening in the home, then we know that there's likely trauma happening in the home and the family needs support. Mm -hmm. So we're going to help not only the person with the addiction or the, you know, the immediate family member or significant other of that, but also the kids in the home. And this is a great way to do that. You coming out and endorsing yeah. that person, it does, it helps to segue and open the door to every new person that's coming in. Even if this becomes your new standard practice where we have a new addition, I want to introduce you. Introduce them to Emily. If she's the one answering an email, put a face with it, put a name yeah. with it, introduce her and say why she's so important and why she's so valuable to the practice. One, it's going to show a ton of gratitude. It's going to make your staff feel good and feel connected. And also you're going to start to see that people are going, you know what? I actually, I mean, I... I really like Elena, but actually I think I need this other person because this feels a little bit more aligned mm -hmm. with who I am. Even if it's almost, I think like the first video that came to mind for me is like little mini interviews. Yes. What was it that got you into right. like, and you yeah. asking them one question, even if it's 30 to 60 seconds, you ask the question, mm -hmm. they answer, there's your reel. And it can be anything from what do you do in your free time? It could be all the things you would normally put in a bio on your website, but ask them and allow that person to talk. When we know that 
they're going to be having, I mean, they're going to be hearing and me be raw and dirty and ugly and hear all of my deep, dark, scary secrets. I want to know that this person's voice doesn't irritate the shit out of me. Or, (laughs) I mean, it's 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 totally a thing. It's totally a thing. Or like, I I need that softer tone. Or you know what? I'm going to need somebody who's going to go get off your ass and get your shit done. If that is who I'm talking to, I know that I'm more aligned with this person than I am with this person. Yeah. And also, I like... Not everyone's going to do this, but you're going to have a few of your clients that genuinely love their therapist and are okay, like, talking about the fact that they're getting help because they're proud of it. And you may get some people in the comments or even just, like, sharing, Mm -hmm. you know, hey, look at, you know, this this lady, she's helped me out so much. Look at what she does, Mm -hmm. you know, or, like, look at this little anecdote that she talked about last week or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, like, a big start to that would be like a solid mission video a hundred that way that way you can introduce the entire team um with those we like to do testimonials like i think testimonials would really help with you uh or help with this goal that you have but it can be really it obviously tough. is very uh, considering what yeah. the, the problem is or what they're getting treatment for it might be a little bit harder well and liam the hard part too is therapists were not allowed to solicit those so it's against our code of ethics and our license so we're always like, people can freely offer them up. Like, I, that doesn't bother us. But we're not allowed to be like, hey, if someone could give us a feedback review or something, like, we can't publicly have you all the AI Google reviews even, right? Right. And even now. And so, like, all of the Google My Business reviews, it's there's that extra caveat to marketing of, like, okay, as a therapist, how I walk that line. And most people go, hey, you loved working with me. Give me some, like, detail about what you enjoyed. Or, like, like 17 to your foot. Yeah. Just coming from some people and going, so, hey, did you leave us a review? Hey, review us. Right. Did you, did you and we're not allowed to do that at all. And that, I think, creates a challenge in how do we try to get some of that naturally where people feel like they can do that on their own. And it's clear we didn't, like, ask them to. I actually think that's a really important yeah. thing to note. Yeah. For potential clients. Like, yeah. you know, because the first thing that anybody does, right, we mm-hmm. all go stalking or we all go digging through reviews, trying to find, okay, if you're me, you go for the negative reviews first and then you go right. get the I most positive ones. I always hit the one star. I want to know why they hated you. Yeah. Um, but being able to even explain, like, you're not going to see thousands of reviews on a therapist like this. And this mm-hmm. is why. Because it goes against our code of ethics. And that honestly is going to make a general consumer, somebody who needs you, go, oh, not only can she not do what do what I'm looking for, right. she can't follow the traditional, but also that the code of ethics is so important to you that you're willing, obviously, to yeah. follow them and not go solicit these reviews and try to pull things out. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually a really important point. I had no idea. Yeah. Knowing that, I'm like, yeah. wow, I feel really bad for all of the counselors that I've never hired because like, while they have f- like five one-star reviews, this guy, person must be shit. No, it's just because the five yeah. stars aren't speaking up because they, they don't yeah. Right. No. Well, and we even you. have, if someone leaves us a review, it's this interesting thing where they could leave a one star. Maybe they never even came to me. They're just like, you know, that awful person who does this for fun on that time. Mm-hmm. I can't say you were never a client of mine. That breaks confidentiality because then it's saying I can say who is and isn't on a public space and I can't. Yeah. And so we have to even like watch. And so thankfully that has never happened for me, but it's all those extra layers to like marketing and all of those pieces, knowing like I'm really restricted sometimes yeah. in the way I can interact with people and engage with people. And so we've done like, okay, ask all your family and friends to talk about your character. And then maybe that'll prompt like someone who sees it and goes, oh, they have like 15 reviews. And they're saying like, oh, this person's compassionate or they're authentic or whatever. Um, well, and then that's another that great piece too. to them to want to do that. That can be a great piece too, is actually getting, you know, getting people to give feedback, but like sending friends and family like a, hey, what's one word that would describe this new hire of mine? And then you read them off. And go, yeah. I, you know, her friends and family think she's compassionate and heartfelt and authentic. And she's, she speaks to me like I'm normal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's things like that where how would a friend or family member describe you? Yeah. And I think that's really a, a, a powerful tool as well. I think you need to come out and share that you're not going to go trolling for this because these, this, de- these details of working with me are so important and it's so private and it's so much yours. Anybody who is soliciting is also going to be put almost on warning. Anybody who sees that reel that goes, 
holy shit, my therapist was asking for a five-star review. Right. Are you actually like following the code of ethics if I'm finding out that you're not supposed to be doing that? Yeah. I think the general consumers don't know. A lot of people have no idea. And all, no other like chiropractors are called to that, but they have confidentiality. They can't hypothetically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Doctors, you expect them to be HIPAA compliant and protect your info, but they can do that. I swear to God, I get, how, how was your experience at this particular doctor today? It was horrible. <laughs> right? And you can go online and there's tons of reviews sometimes for all of those things. But yeah, if you start looking up various counseling centers, therapists, we have to be so careful on how we walk that line. And we're one of the only fields in the medical profession that is that tied down. And I think part of it is we're one of the newer ones, right? Like, yes, we've been around for a very long time, but nowhere near as long as some of these others. And so we're just always going to be a little bit behind on catching up. Like I did a supervision training and it was so funny because they're talking about like how you provide supervision and... The person training, he's like, so I looked up the Michigan laws and there are rules for how you conduct yourself on ham radio still. And I was like, yeah. it's been a long time since anyone would have needed to use a ham radio for therapy, even in the UP. But like, I know when was people out of doing that, but like that's how far behind our own like legislature is for our field. Oh, and it's just not catching up with all of the advances of social media and this online presence. And there's no real good format for how to do this thing. Yeah. Going back, I think that probably is the biggest piece for, from my suggestions would be lean. I, I can't believe I'm saying this. Can you plug your ears for a second? Oh boy. <laughs> lean into video testimonials within your staff, introing your team in video. Shut up. <laughs> mission video. I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> Ass. Um, leaning into that mission video. I think especially, I mean, while you are, obviously a little bit more confined with your marketing, yeah. you are kind of at that same tipping point that every small business or solopreneur moving into a business owner is at. And I feel like there's a lot of people who are going to be watching this who are kind of in that same point where mm -hmm. it's, um, how do you turn yourself from being, it's all me to yes. I'm a team and this is my team and this is why they're so valuable. And I think what makes it powerful is you introducing them and telling why they're so important and so valuable to you and why you chose them. Because you do have other options, just like a consumer right. or a client has other options. So you basically advocating for them is going to help intro them, and then you slowly start to step back. Yeah. So you're, the practice is speaking instead of you are speaking. Mm -hmm. um, some of your specialists and some of your other, your, even, even Emily, even Emily being able to come on and talk about what it's like to be at the practice yeah. could be really valuable. So, so, and then you start to basically pull back and start using the we instead of the I. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And what I will say too is like, obviously I'm biased here, but <laughs> I, but I do think that being in the field that you're in, mm -hmm. it is very important to have a very upscale look. Mm -hmm. So like the, you know, cause I saw like you have some video up of like you public speaking and stuff and it's amazing and keep doing it, but I feel like once you get to the point where you can level that stuff up, it needs to be. And I think you do that by, damn it, I'm so sorry. Can you plug your ears again? Honestly, it's, it's an equipment shift. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not shooting from an iPhone or I'm not having yeah. somebody in the audience, like trying to anchor their elbows against their ribs to hold the camera straight. It's going to be grabbing, you know, good quality equipment and mm -hmm. just kind of having it for the office. You know, these silly cheap cameras that Parker has getting one of those. <laughs> <laughs> or even getting something as kind of a, a, an intro and having, yeah. you know, a tripod and really having it set up. Um, that professional look is going to add to your credibility, but also we know that you have a lot more control over things like lighting and editing when you use a, a higher quality yeah. piece of equipment. So that homey, warm, warmer colors that we know we need to feel, even if you have super harsh office lighting, right? We yeah. can have a lot, we have a lot more adaptive tools when it comes to higher quality video content. And then the other pieces, I mean, to your point, as you're kind of leveling up these other uh, these other things, those consistency and images. I know you're using mm -hmm. Canva, creating using the same colors. Yeah. This is more for everybody out there. Make sure you're using consistent designs, please. Yeah, for real. Oh, consistent designs, please. I'm gonna say it one more time. Consistent designs, please. <laughs> um, but also, you know, leveling up the quality of like the website. I know you've done it yourself. SEO is going to be incredibly important. I know you're in all these other places 
we know that people are looking on Google for this. Yes. You do have some competition in the area, not a ton, but especially as you offer telehealth, you've got the opportunity to expand even wider yes. and go, you know, UP, you can even go Midwest mm-hmm. and doing something like with Google ads where maybe you're very specific. We're not going to do just therapy near me. We're going to talk about yeah. these specific things that you specialize in because you're niched, which, oh God, she's even niched. Yeah. <laughs> So, like because you have this specific yeah. skill set and these specific certifications, you had a lot, have a lot of capabilities to do Google Ads without mm-hmm. breaking any codes of ethics. When we're talking about these are the things that we treat, yeah. but we treat the family, not just we treat the individual patient. Mm-hmm. I think that like that you can look at that holistically is huge. The other piece then is making sure that everything that's coming out of there, if you're going to run social media ads, being very specific about what you do and what you serve. That one would be a little bit harder because you're doing outbound advertising. So you have to be very careful about keywords to make sure that social doesn't get really upset with you. But also, um, you know, finding the target, right? Yeah. Addiction is a weird one. It literally goes, there's no, there's there's no boundaries. I can't send, I can't say Mm -hmm. like, if you are a 36 year old person with two kids, you are absolutely a hundred percent going to be perfect for this ad mm-hmm. where we can with a lot of other products. Yeah. This is all encompassing. It's all ages. And especially when they're, you're treating not just the patient, but also mm-hmm. family members that targeting is going to be really difficult. So of the two, I would lean towards inbound ads mm-hmm. through Google and I would really expand that a little bit more. Um, but then they have to have a great place to land, yeah. which would be a refreshed and elevated mm-hmm. website design. And just something that feels comforting, reassuring, which you've got that built in. It's just how do we make it look just a little bit more prestige, a little yes. bit more premium. I'm your partner, mm-hmm. but I'm also so well-trained. I were, we're your allies, your advocates, mm-hmm. but we're just, we're, we're really ready for you. And yeah. I think that's that one next step for you. Yeah. Because I, like, I judge businesses based off of how much they've invested in their own look. You could have yeah. just stopped that I judge. Well, <laughs> I do that too. Um, but like, like I've seen a, um, like I was looking for chiropractors. Mm-hmm. The chiropractor I chose was the one that had the best looking photos of his office. Mm-hmm. It was because I knew, and, and it wasn't because the photos were good. It was because I knew, oh, this guy makes enough money to hire a photographer. He must be good. Yeah. So I think that, and and like, I don't know, maybe like I'm just weird, but like, do you guys feel that way? So I think as marketers, we recognize it, we notice it. So we're like, oh, they have brand photography. Like, hot damn, look at that. I think a general consumer looks at it and goes, oh, they, like, this is a nice place. This is a great, Mm -hmm. this is a great practice because I see him. I don't just see stock images. Um, I think a general consumer just looks at it and goes, oh, it's pretty. I want to go here. Or I know what he looks like. So if Mm -hmm. somebody's going to be physically touching me, then I know exactly the person who's going to be cracking my spine. So it's even just some of that relational things. Um, But yeah, I think I judge too. Just so Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I think priority number one. Right? (laughs) We just judge a little differently. (laughs) We go, their marketing strategy is "Eh," where everybody else goes, oh, I don't know if I want to go there because they look a little sketchy. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, and for the audience, think about that. Like, think about how you are putting your business out into the world. Because the, like, what you live out every day is not the same thing that people experience. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially when they don't come in to see you in person. It's, like, the only bit of look into, you know, who these people actually are, mm-hmm. are their online presence. Absolutely. And yet there, there's so many businesses, especially in the like coaching, consulting, you know, counseling space where like, you're just selling you and your skill set that just don't care. They, they just think that, oh, well, I need to be on social cause it's not an option anymore and whatever, but you have to take it seriously or else it's not going to do anything for you. And people believe in positive word of mouth, but they don't believe in negative word of mouth. So with that, like if you don't have a good reputation on like social, even silently, like you just look like shit, people are not going to work with you and you're not going to know. 
you're not going to know because they're not going to, like, no one's going to tell you, like, oh, yeah, I didn't hire you because you look like shit on social. It's right. It just happens. They just go somewhere else. And they also don't necessarily know why they didn't pick you. Right. Like, we, you, you know this better than anybody. Yeah. We're emotional creatures. Every decision we make is based on emotion. We just find facts to back it up afterwards, yes. yep. which is where that whole, you know, alternate facts or things mm-hmm. come up. It's because we've actually decided before we actually come up with a reason why. We justify it after we've kind of made the choice. And all of those little inconsistencies or those little, you know, step ups, steps up, that's what makes somebody go, yeah, I think I actually want to work with this company versus I don't want to work with this company at all because, but I can't point to why. All right. So let's do big three. What are, what are the big three? First one is definitely going to be your website because that's where everybody goes. Next is going to be your intro and how you present yourself on social. So minimum mission video. Um, that will also reintroduce the team. And I think in addition to that, um, like your second step is going to be just all of that content and really pushing the team and not yeah. just you. Um, and then I think the third thing would probably end up being um, just posting more content on like frequently asked questions. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like w- because not everybody knows what it's like to be in therapy. You know, and a lot of people are terrified of being in therapy because they just don't know. They just think that, oh, well, this person's going to talk at me and tell me how much I suck and, like, that I need to fix my shit and whatever and I don't want to. Because, let's be real, if you need a therapist, you're not in a great space. So I think the more and more you can make... Um, I don't, I don't want to say like make it cool because like that's not the right word, but to make it, I guess, like just more inviting and more like, it's fine that you need this and that's what we're here for. It's Mm -hmm. not this pie in the sky idea that like, you know, no one talks about anymore. It like, this is a normal thing because people are fucked up, you know, (laughs) like we're, we're all a little fucked up in all of our own ways. And some of us Mm -hmm. just need that help. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I think even just taking away some of the fear, Mm because a lot of times we, Mm -hmm. we don't make the choice because we're afraid of, we don't know what we're walking into. It's the fear of the unknown. I don't know what my life looks like afterwards. If we can alleviate some of the walking in fears, it makes the other fears seem more approachable as well. If we've got six reasons why we're not getting help, if we could alleviate two or three of those with those FAQs or with just you know, talking about, even talking about stigma, like it's really hard to come in. You're safe here. No one has to know you're here. No one has to know you're working with us. And that is a great segue into, we don't, we can't, we are not going to solicit. We're not going to ask you for a review. We're not going to talk about this. Your, your information, your identity is safe with us. Um, and I think that alleviates a lot of concerns, especially when you're talking to it versus just, okay, well, I know my therapist can't say anything, but can't they? Like how many Law and Order episodes are there that exist because a therapist broke confidentiality or a doctor broke confidentiality? Oh, that's our number one thing for most of us in this field is like, why must they portray us so horribly? And most of us are not out there falling in love with our clients. Like, I don't know why that's the thing. That's why it is, isn't it? We're not that media perception or I could play some in like, so do I lay down on the couch? Wait, oh, no one's done that in years. No, you, I mean, you can. I'm a lady on a blanket. Go for it. But like... And, but it's no. not necessarily <laughs> part of it. And I think that's what's really important is we have all of these these social expectations of what this is like. Yeah. Let's break some of those. Like, what yeah. is it like to walk in? Part of that mission video, and it's honestly, I would almost call it like an unveiling video versus yeah. a mission video. You're making a shift from it's me to it's us, right? Yeah. So unveil it like it's a new offering. Yes. That mission video is sort of like your coming out video. Mm-hmm. We are now more than me. And it's bigger than us. It's bigger than one person. Just like when we're treating problems, it's bigger than one person. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, families feeding into the trauma or kids are impacted or there's there's larger issues going on. We're not just treating the single person. We're treating everybody they're touching as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it'd be really important there to almost, again, consider it an unveiling yeah. versus a mission video. It's going to have the same purpose. It's going to have the same voice. But this is sort of like you're almost like a rebrand. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not just you. It's not just Elena yeah. that has a fun name and a butterfly name. It's now we're a whole group, a whole colony versus what you work for. Yeah. All right. I think And that's- there's so much that you can do with the whole butterfly oh my reference gosh. too. Like I yeah. have no idea what you mean, kaleidoscope <laughs> effect, fluttering, migration. Would you like a list of words? We have some. 
Um, I just started a, another podcast with my business partner for that yesterday. It's called mm -hmm. Flutter Up Buttercup. Like, mm -hmm. there's a hundred directions you can go yes. with that and really play into that and still keep mm -hmm. it consistent. So yeah, I think top three is just getting that um, that unveiling done. Yep. Um, and then your well, one being your website, two being your unveiling, and then three just being the better content, you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. and more down to earth, relatable stuff. And yeah. I think you're going to do a lot more with video content and <laughs> <laughs> video content is going to do a lot more for you yeah. than doing just static content and Canva's great for static content and not so great for doing quick for video edits. Yeah. So yeah. something to definitely have her start looking into mm -hmm. or having you look into to train Emily is starting to do quick yeah, video. Yeah. And I was edits. like, I think we're going to have to do reels and I know nothing about reels. <laughs> hey, I know a guy. <laughs> What is the best if we're trying to be on like social media? Does having a TikTok matter because we don't, or like does having threads matter because we don't? Like, I don't even know where I have the basics. We have LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram because that's what I have personally used. Yeah, it's that idea of like where else should we be? Think about you don't have to be perfect in all of them, mm -hmm. but if you're already creating great content that's designed for, for Instagram. It's going to translate really well to Facebook because that they're like yeah, meta, they right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're already creating a great video content and you're, mm -hmm. I mean, you're already putting in the work, dropping it in TikTok is sort of like a, it's just an extra little bonus. You might not, it might never become viral. It might never go crazy, mm -hmm. but it exists. And that might be where somebody's poking around and looking at things. Yeah. It's just another way to even help with cultural shift in when it comes to addiction therapy, right? Well, and let's be real too. Like there are a lot of counselors on TikTok and there are a lot of yes. people who need counseling on TikTok. <laughs> um, so I feel like that's a lot more of a mainstream thing on TikTok itself. Yes. So I think like, yeah, lean into that. One other thing that I also tell like a lot of our clients to do is if you want to post more, just take whatever you shot in like a video and write a post about said video or write a mm -hmm. post about the topic mm -hmm. in the video. Mm -hmm. That way you can take that, you can post that on threads, you can post that on LinkedIn as a long form written post. I was post. gonna say, that would be the biggest thing is I wouldn't necessarily post the videos on LinkedIn, but I mean, the I do transcript, both. the yeah. transcript from it, or throw it up on YouTube as well. And just, you know, we make sure that you have the right keywords in there. Some of that is like stuff you'll learn, and it, but it doesn't have to be perfect when you get started. Okay. But if you're already putting in the time and energy to make a good video, mm -hmm throw it in all the places. The worst case is it does nothing. Yeah. It's not going to harm you by having it in multiple places. The biggest thing that from a digital marketing perspective is having somebody watch it to make sure that obviously things don't go off the rails yes. because of the topic that you're, <laughs> that you have, but also to respond to things. You'd be surprised at how many times people ask questions or, Hey, I want to know more. Where do I go? If they don't necessarily yeah. finish the video where it says, drop the word, then we, you, you want to have somebody just kind of observing and making sure that those are getting responded to. If somebody sends a DM with it, those yeah. kinds of things. So just making sure that they're watched, throwing notifications up on the mm -hmm. work computer for all of these things after something's posted is no big deal. But if you're going to do the work, you might as well post it in all the places. True. It doesn't need to be perfectly optimized for all of them. Mm -hmm. Just do the one that you know works well. You know Facebook and Instagram work well. LinkedIn, getting there, right? Yeah. Do it for those and then just post it everywhere else. That's okay. a good starting point. What about stories versus news feed content? Yeah. <laughs> so. You, you want this one or do you want me to go? Uh, well, I'll give my opinion because I, <laughs> um, I actually just started doing more stories. Mm -hmm. So personally, like when I consume stories, it's because I'm bored and I, yeah. I have nothing to do. And I need to kill some time. So I like flipping through them. Um, I just like I don't make content for stories but i share the content that i've already made and make a story about it okay. so like i uh what i've been doing is taking because i have brand photos just like in a folder mm -hmm. i'll take a brand photo throw a black and white filter on it and then do like um you know are you dealing with such and such issue like um like yesterday i put or a couple days ago it doesn't matter um but this week i had posted a video about me explaining like how I dealt with someone that was hating on me and how I turned that into free engagement. And mm -hmm. I had just said on like the slide before, it was like, you know, if you're having trouble, you know, like dealing with your haters on social, here's something to try. 
you know, and then it leads them into what they're about to see so that they actually watch the damn video. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside that, I... Mm, Stories yes. are a ton of work for really something that lasts about 24 hours. Right. So, um, like there's some... help though for your account? Yes. That's So that is actually one thing I did yesterday. Yesterday was an absolutely insane business day. I tracked every single, like every single activity I did all day. I took a, like a picture and I timed, time stamped it. And then I made that into a highlight reel. So, I, I was actually pretty impressed. I, I, I saw that. I was like, oh. Go to hell. But also, I, thank you. <laughs> um, so I think there's a ton of value in it. I would not necessarily spend a bunch of time in it. I would just yeah. use it to feed into the feed. The feed lasts longer, right? It actually right. like yeah. exists. It doesn't disappear. If you find something does really well on stories, I would consider converting it into a highlight okay. on Instagram. For the most part though, I create a story as I need to, or if something yeah. again feeds a larger thing. Threads. I haven't I ever okay. signed up for it. I never. Um, yeah. Also, anybody who ever asks me about X or Twitter, my answer is usually don't bother. Only yeah. because Not it right goes now. too it goes too fast. Yeah. Especially because it's short form and it, everything flies through so quickly. By the time you get something created, posted, it's ten minutes. It's completely irrelevant because mm-hmm. there's a thousand things ahead of it. So. It's typically not something unless you are going to have an, a person's entire job be Twitter and engagement. It's not necessarily worth investing in. Except for when Elon turns it over into a Vine esque platform. Oh I my am god! So you excited! And your <laughs> Vine esque platform. This is insanity. I'm I'm so fucking excited. Oh my god! Anyway, just gotta bring back body, right? Like, yes. <laughs> Why, oh are I, Why are you helping? Why are you helping him? I think that's bullshit. Honestly. He's so low right now. <laughs> Damn. Man. See, she's trying to make a fucking client out of me right now. She's bullying it's, me. It's working. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. He's, he's already filling out his intake form. <laughs> <laughs> what other questions can we answer? I think it's just a lot of knowing, like, just what is the best way to engage when we can't necessarily ask for those reviews, right? Like the ways people would traditionally market. And you've answered some of that. Like we just have to do it differently. Well, and it even can be things less about, hey, here's what we want, but like what has therapy done for you? And leave it open-ended. You'd be surprised how many it'll be. It can be clients. It can be um, past clients. It can be followers or lurkers. Well, it hasn't done anything because I haven't, I haven't gone before or, you know, in my case, uh, therapy was helpful, but my life coach saved my life in every aspect. Yeah. Like it's a very different conversation. It opens the door to those conversations, but you'd be surprised. Some of your clients might actually just come mm-hmm. up and go, honestly, Elena has saved me and my marriage or saved me and my relationships because of the work that she's been doing with yeah. me. You're not soliciting a review. It's what has it done for you? Mm-hmm. And it's open conversation. Yeah. You're not asking them for feedback. It's what has it done? I would, I would really lean into more vague questions. Yeah. And again, it just, it starts a conversation. You'd be surprised how many people are lurking, not sure they're ready to take the step, but to see that one, that you're listening two that you're responding and three, that you actually understand them. Like that's, that's yeah. going to be everything. And I know in your case mm-hmm. that it's not always about, um, like you want to help people. You're not right. in this business because you are trying to make millions of dollars, mm-hmm. right. And create the new vine yeah I have no intention of going viral (laughs) well and and in all honesty I think that's what makes what you want to create so powerful you know you want to get in front of more people to help more people that translates your even you sitting here that completely translates in everything that you talked about with your business everything all these questions that you're asking is how can we help more people all we have to do is just basically give you more of that screen time and Mm -hmm. get you in front of more people and we do that through the algorithm you can do that through ads and then even just putting yourself in more places and really leaning into video yeah. because that just comes out of the screen at somebody. I'm sure people on here are like, um, yeah, I need to talk to Elena. <laughs> <laughs> or Elena's team because Elena's booked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Elena, where can people find you? So they can find me on Facebook and Instagram. It's Mariposa Counseling LLC. And then we have www.mariposacounselingllc.com. God, the consistency.
consistency. For real. Consistency. The first oh. thing I did was go and make sure that everything was available. Nice. When I was planning names for the business, I was like, okay, is it on Facebook? It's Can I get it in all the places? I if did so, the we're good. Same thing. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't with this woman. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys have any questions for Elena or want to um, connect with her, all of her info is going to be in the uh, description. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments. And uh, yeah, this has been our third episode of Michigan Marketing in the Morning. We're still living. We haven't killed each other yet. It's close call. And if you're seeing the show, that means that we got past the third episode. We so, did because we would have finished editing it and uploaded it. Right. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and we will talk to you soon. Smith. Smith. Okay. Because <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> this is, I swear to God, we're never going to make it out of season one. No. No. We're just going to be like, fuck The outtakes people. can be their own season. That's, That's going to be the filler between seasons. Yes. It's going to be longer than the season. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've been trying to hold back a cough for like okay. a minute. I'm like, <laughs> my eye is watering and everything. I'm like, please don't blink. Please don't blink.